As fall turns to winter and the temperature drops below freezing, frost heave, or more accurately, frost action, begins damaging our roads, and the problem continues right through winter into spring. Frost action causes heaving, dips, cracks, and potholes in pavement. It also dislocates posts and produces complaints from citizens. The damage caused by frost action is a major cost factor for public works agencies and road users. Three factors work together to form ice that damages our roads, water in the soil, freezing temperatures, and frost-susceptible soils, or in more memorable terms, it's the three W's, water, winter, and wicking. To construct and maintain roads that resist damage from frost action, roadway officials need a clear understanding of frost action in soils. In the 1960s, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers researchers showed how frost action occurs. They placed frost-susceptible soil in a temperature-controlled environment so they could measure the amount of movement, or heave, caused by frost formation in the soil. Due only to frost formation in the soil, the originally 6-inch high soil sample grew to 10 inches, a total heaving of almost 70% of the sample's initial height. This same frost action occurs in our roads. Just as in the laboratory experiment, when water is drawn into the soil by capillary action, ice forms in the soil. That heaves the pavement upward and eventually leads to pavement damage. In the spring, the ice in the soil begins to thaw just as it froze, from the top down. So now, water in the base layer is trapped between the pavement surface above and the still frozen subgrade soil below. With nowhere to go, the extra water pulled in by capillary action during the freezing process saturates and weakens the base. Now, traffic loading damages the entire pavement structure. There are four ways to repair frost-damaged pavements or to build new pavements that are not susceptible to frost damage in the first place. One is to improve the quality of the subgrade soil, either by replacing frost-susceptible soil with non-frost-susceptible material or by blending non-frost-susceptible material into the existing soil. The second method is to insulate a frost-susceptible subgrade from the upper pavement layers to inhibit the top-down advance of frost. The third method is to prevent moisture from being wicked up from the subgrade into the base by placing a layer of drainable material below the base. The fourth way is to drain water in the subgrade to the sides of the pavement structure into ditches or storm drain systems. This can be done with geosynthetic materials or by crowning the subgrade, or both. Frost action is a major cause of pavement damage, but public officials should understand that by investing in properly constructed pavements, frost action can be controlled or eliminated. With better information, we can improve our roads and reduce costs.